Hi, and welcome to BB Flicks, our, our weekly, bi-weekly program of uh, what we've been watching lately. I'm Bridget from the Reference Department, and with me today is Jeff from the Reference Department, oh. Alyssa from the Reference Department, Casey from the Youth Room, and Annie from the Youth Room as well. <laughs> Annie, we are live, so. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> right, in, right in time, so. Perfect timing. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with uh, me today. I'll, I'll go first to say what I've been watching. I just started watching, oh, and I should say started, but I finished the whole thing in basically a day, which is Never Have I Ever on Netflix. Oh, uh, I've heard about that, is it good? new teen show, and it was delightful. Uh, it is basically about a young Indian American girl who has had kind of a tough year. You'll find out very quickly in the show, her beloved father has recently passed away and she had some other issues and is going back to school and she wants to like make this a great year. It's just, it's just really, it's very funny. The characters are great. The acting is really wonderful. They found this girl, like she had never acted before, who plays the main character, whose name is Debbie. She had never acted before. She was basically an unknown. And she's great. She's amazing. Uh, it also has a, I'm, this is kind of a spoiler because it, it is kind of delightful, but I, I'm going to, I'm just going to say it, is that, so the show is narrated. It has a voiceover. Now, does it have a voiceover by Debbie? No. It has a voiceover by John McEnroe. <laughs> John McEnroe. <laughs> yes. As, as John McEnroe? Like, as, as John McEnroe. McEnroe. Oh. Oh, okay. We're revealed through the show why, why it is. There's kind of a reasoning why that you do find out. But honestly, he's, he's a great narrator. He should narrate more things. <laughs> and that's really my, is, is what I, what I came to, to think is that John McEnroe, amazing narrator for some reason. Uh, but yeah, it's 10 episodes. They're a half hour each sitcom, teen sitcom from, uh, from Mindy Kaling. So if you've seen oh, yeah, yeah. Mindy Project or if you've seen her work on The Office, obviously, it's kind of, it's not necessarily like those, but it has that, uh, her sense of humor. It's, it's just so good. It's like hard to explain why you should watch it other than it's just, it's just great like and and it has family there's a lot of family things in it and also her friends and and real issues that our team that teams deal with but presented in a very funny way so you'll enjoy that <laughs> so that's me it's on netflix uh it just came on to netflix probably within the past three weeks so it's fairly new uh, absolutely like i said it's 10 episodes a half hour each you'll be done with it in an afternoon if you can space it off for more time than that, then you know you have more willpower than I do. So I just <laughs> uh, so now Jeff is going to tell us what he's been watching. Okay. Well, in addition to catching up on sci-fi escapism, which I've been slowly working my way through. Um, oh, I do have to say um, this is something that isn't out until this week, but it's worth mentioning. This Friday, Friday. Um, Netflix is do, starting their um, Space Force comedy, the one with Steve Carell in it, and oh, yeah. a whole bunch of other famous people. And I'm kind of looking forward to that because that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. And I've been using science fiction to just kind of get away. Um, but the more intense thing I've been watching, which I just finished yesterday, um, is called Normal People, which was on Hulu. Um, and I was kind of not sure if I wanted to watch it because it is, it's fairly serious, it's a drama, um, but I really loved it. And if any of you, if you actually read the book, which came out last year, I, um, the book is by Sally Rooney. And I read it mainly because it was, um, she's an Irish writer, it all takes place in Ireland. And I read it mainly because the book was on a lot of sort of best of 2019 lists. Um, but I loved it. It's, um, the title is very appropriate. It focuses on these, these two, um, a young man and woman in, in high school who start a relationship and it kind of follows them over a period of several years into their early twenties on this off again, on again relationship. Um, and the, 
the casting that they did for the TV series, which again, like, like the one you mentioned, Bridget, is about, I think it's 12 episodes and they're all short. They're all less than half an hour. Um, the casting is superb. Um, I don't know who I had in my head when I was reading the novel, but these people, the actors that they found are just perfect. Um, it's a really good sense of Ireland. It's very character driven. If you want action, this is not for you. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's, I will say it, the, the TV series is extraordinarily faithful to the book, which means it's a little slow because not a lot happens. It's mostly the inner, um, the inner workings of these two people as they find out who they are and as they grow. They're both kind of damaged in one way or another um, and, and very differently. Um, Connell, who is the, the boy, is um, a jock in high school and he plays football and he's popular. And, um, but he's also extremely bright and so he kind of hides that side of himself. He's very literary, he reads a lot, he likes to write. And Marianne, um, who is the, the female lead, is pretty odd. She's someone who doesn't fit in in school. No one likes her, no one knows her. She's very antisocial. She's also brilliant. Um, both of these two people have single parents, but Marianne comes from a very wealthy family. Connor comes from, Connell comes from a very working class family. And in fact, they meet because his mother is a house cleaner for Marianne's mother. And that's how they come together. But there's all these great secondary characters, this sort of little solar system of friends and family members. The women who play the two mothers are superb. Um, and it's very touching. It's the, these are two characters who don't really know who they are and who are trying to find where they fit in the world. And they, they really only click with each other and have a hard time clicking with anybody else. So no matter where they go, they keep coming back to each other in different ways. Um, it's just beautiful. So it's, it's very literary. Um, the TV show, I think, does a great job at capturing the feel of the book. So I think it's, it's if, if you are looking for a really solid drama with really good characters, and I wouldn't say Ireland is a major part of it. Um, it could take place anywhere, but it happens to take place there. So if you like Ireland and you want to see people strolling the streets of Dublin and going to pubs and studying at Trinity, um, it's, it's a nice escape in that way as well. Um, so that's on Hulu. Um, and it's, I think the whole thing, it's under six hours total. So that's another one that you could binge in a weekend if you wanted to. Yeah, I, I have not watched Normal People, but I have seen um, the actor who plays Connell um, pictures of him online and uh, he's not bad on the eyes I will say <laughs> if that is an, uh, an appeal factor for anyone he um, has, uh, there, he has part of the review there is a lot of tasteful nudity in it if that's an issue too um, this or a highlight issue or, or highlight you know depending, depending <laughs> no <on> judging <laughs> yeah. um, fast forwarding but one of the things I really liked about it is, the, the, and the title alludes to this, these are, e everything about them is so relatable. These are normal people. And they're also not normal because they each have their problems and, and issues and stuff. But um, everything that they're going through is something that you're gonna see some part of your life in. So that's why I, I really, you, you can't not feel for the characters. All right, so that's on Hulu. Uh, so now, Casey, what do you have? What did you um, I, I've been um, catching up on the latest season of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which is a uh, very much a favorite of mine, um, which surprised the crap out of me when I first started watching it because generally the like half an hour comedies are not my thing, um, but Brooklyn Nine-Nine is amazing. Um, I constantly sing its praises. Uh, we have a couple left of this season because we're trying to stretch it out, not because we don't, like, not because we don't really want to watch it, but we're trying, like, we know we don't get any more probably till next, like, like, January, February, so we want to make it last, um, but we've been really enjoying this season is, is still, um, just as strong, it's also on Hulu, um, just as good as the previous seasons, 
Um, it's just such a perfect, the show as a whole, perfect combination of being completely <laughs> irreverent, being very, like, politically correct in a weird way, but also not politically correct, but, like, playing on the not politically correct to make a really good statement, mm -hmm. along with being hilariously funny. Um, so that's, that's one of our, one of my favorites. Um, one of my roommates and I watch, watch it, uh, after having binged the first couple seasons and we were sad when we caught up too, because again, then we had to wait. <laughs> we caught up just in time for, was it, was it on Fox? Fox. Fox, yeah. to dump, Fox to dump it just as we were catching up. And then we had to like wait on, you know, until NBC picked it up. Um, so whole hours later. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We were like, wait, but we're just catching up. And then NBC was like, surprise. We we're like, yes. It was a very stressful 24 hours. For it, that was very stressful. Um, and then the other thing I've been rewatching, and I'll have to look and see if it's actually, I don't actually know if it's on anywhere. You guys might know is Leverage. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know if it's streaming anywhere it used to not i mean i own it all on dvd because i loved it so much that when i originally watched it i bought it all but i don't actually know if it's streaming anywhere now so i think it must be streaming somewhere because they just announced like a streaming reboot of leverage so it must be i assume that it streams on whatever service that is but also but, but I... the, it's going to be streaming so maybe it, it might be on amazon because the new one's going to be i think through imdb and play on Amazon Prime, I think is what the new one, but that's what got me, um, that's what got me re-watching, um, was the announcement that they're going to kind of reboot, but it also kind of seems like a bit of a sequel, because a lot of the original characters are coming back, um, it, it kind of, I get the impression that because of where oh. the series ended, that a lot of the character, a lot of the characters that are coming back are the ones that were kind of left with the legacy of, of the leverage, and so I suspect it'll be kind of them maybe with the next generation, like maybe train, that's kind of what I'm getting out of this a little bit. Um, but yeah, Leverage is one of my all time favorites. For those of you who don't know Leverage, the, the, the idea of Leverage is um, a insurance, a guy who did insurance like payouts and coverage and tracked down all the bad people for a million years, um, he gets screwed by his own insurance company um, in relation to his, his son. Um, who had a, um, some sort of horrible disease, um, and the son gets incredibly sick, and the insurance company rejects paying for the son's, um, health care. The son, before the show, right before the show starts, uh, the son has died, and so what he decides to do to get the insurance company back and to help people like himself, who the law and the insurance won't help, is he goes and finds basically four of the people who always escaped him when he was trying to track them down, and makes a team that then goes about doing highly illegal things in the best way possible to help people against real, real scumbags in the world. Um, and it's, each episode is its own, like, heist, um, so if you like, you know, Ocean's Eleven or Ocean's Eight, or you've liked the Italian job, like this is that kind of thing, but in 45 minute episodes. Um, the characterization of the characters and the character growth over the five seasons is amazing. Um, they do such a good job with it. Um, they do such a good job with the comedy and also hitting very heavy handed topics. Because again, like we start out the show with the guy's son dying, but in a way that like you you're just really rooting for the team as a whole. Um, and they are amazing and very, very not adjusted to real life when this starts. And so half of it is them trying to become a team and work together well and, you know, really get to become basically a, a found family. Um, and the last episode of the show um, is honestly, I believe, one of the best hours of television that has ever been done. It is so well done, so much, like, misdirection, and, like, you know, I, I was, um, it aired a while ago, it, it hasn't, it's been off the air for a while, but it was, um, it aired right, like, Christmas Eve, that episode, or, like, right around Christmas, and I was at my grandmother's, and I, I was an adult, don't get me wrong, but I still, like, I had to beg my mom to be like, look, I need to stay up, I need to use, steal their TV, I need to st stay up and watch this live, like, I cannot not watch this live, it's impossible to find anywhere else, I gotta watch it live, and 
my mom was in the room above me and I kept my mom awake for the entire hour. And I'm not like a demonstrative person when I watch TV, but I kept my mom up the entire hour yelling at the TV and crying. And it was amazing. Um, it was, so it's definitely, um, as I said, I think it's on Amazon Prime. Well, um, just so you know, I actually, while you were talking, I looked it up on one of my favorite apps, which is called Just Watch, um, that allows you to look up a show mm -hmm. and see what services um, it's available on. And all five seasons are on Hoopla. Oh, oh, so look, you can have, you can use your library card. Oh, I- Free from the library yeah. with your card. It will probably um, take you a while to get through it that way, because I bet each episode counts as a, counts as a checkout, so. That's true, you might have to space it. It is not, it is a show that's not, it's not like a full, like, an ABC or NBC show that has 22 episodes a season. I mean, they are like 12, 13, 14-ish episodes a season. So you probably could get, but it's also a good real, actually in a way is a really good show to spread out because it's really fun to work your way through this, the, the, the really good arc of the series um, along with the characters. So it's not actually a bad one. It, it is very bingeable. Um, but it's also because there's basically each season has an overarching bad guy and then there's individual episodes within that. So you can spread it out and still really, you know, enjoy it. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's what I have been, I mean, along with the occasional like Disney movie as palette, complete and utter palette cleanser. Um, that is what I've been watching. Yeah. I left out that I, I recently watched the Lindsay Lohan Parent Trap. It was in a teen. A classic. Classic. Yes. But also, when you watch it as an adult, all the adults in this are dangerously unhinged. Yeah. <laughs> Completely irresponsible. Like, yes. should not have children. <laughs> do not do this to your children. I mean, honestly, if you split your twins up already, see, Afra agrees. Afra agrees it is a bad idea to split your twins up. Yeah. I forgot to introduce Afra. I was going to introduce her when, when we, I forgot to introduce her. But yes, Afra is here and she agrees that they're, they're not making the right choices here. Uh, well, on that note, Annie, what did you watch? <laughs> yeah. um, so while Jeff is watching sci-fi as escapism, um, I am also binging half-hour comedies as my personal escapism. Um, so I've been watching the show Miracle Workers, which is fairly new. Um, it's an anthology comedy, and it's based on the writings of humorist Simon Rich, who also used to write for uh, SNL. Um, Coincidentally, um, Lauren Michaels is actually one of the executive producers of this show. So it's funny if that wasn't clear. <laughs> um, the first season, it's basically a workplace comedy, but it is set in heaven. And it opens with us meeting Eliza, who's one of the angels there. And she's being transferred to the, the Department of Answered Prayers um, from her previous position in the Department of Dirt. Um, <laughs> so she's really pumped to like finally make a difference on earth and just do some good in the world, make some positive change. Um, wild and crazy, that is so much easier said than done. Uh, go figure, who knew, who could have predicted that? Um, she gets to the Department of Answered Prayers and there is one single other person who works there. His name is Craig, he's played by Daniel Radcliffe, who if you didn't know, he's oh. really, really funny. Now I know which show you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, Craig I'm reading is, about this. Yeah, he's, he's a real like hermit. He hasn't seen another being in actual eons. Um, and again, he's the only person in this department and they get about two billion prayers a day. And Craig answers uh, two or three a day. And he claims that with Eliza's help though, now they can probably answer five or six, maybe as many as six. <laughs> Eliza's kind of bummed um, the work that Craig does. It's like, I don't know, someone has a lost glove, it's, it's lost in the snow, and he's on his little computer and he clicks each individual snowflake to remove them to make the glove appear to answer someone's prayer to find their lost glove. Uh, Eliza is unimpressed, unenthused by this. Uh, she finds out that all the prayers he can't answer are stamped as impossible and sent up to God, who in addition to not answering any of these prayers, isn't doing anything at all, actually. Um, he's played by Steve Buscemi, and God is this 
absolute burnout loser. Um, he's completely lost control of the earth and he's just sort of like drinking and not taking care of himself. Um, and he's focusing instead on like his restaurant idea, which is, um, get this, it's a lazy river and all of the food is served on lazy Susans. The face Casey's making is also the face that his advisor makes when God <laughs> tells him this idea. <laughs> so Eliza, uh, she raises concerns with God that Earth is kind of like a dumpster fire right now. Um, this part definitely does hit a little close to home, but, um, <laughs> and she's like, you need to do something. We have to do something about this. And he's like, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I will just blow up the earth, which is not really what Eliza had in mind. Uh, so she strikes a bargain with God that if she and Craig can answer one impossible prayer, he will not blow up the earth. And he says, okay, you have two weeks. Um, so that's season one. Um, I binged this in a day, um, big day for bingers on uh, BB Flicks who are watching. <laughs> um, the first season, it's only uh, seven half hour long episodes. Uh, I found it to be well paced. It's really funny. Uh, I thought the performances were all really fab and the premise is just very uh, wacky and fun. I think this is a really good uh, watch alike if you are a fan of The Good Place, um, obviously both sort of looking at the afterlife, um, but also quite focused on sort of this whole message of uh, what can I do in the world? What can I do that's positive? And it's sort of just a, a small thing that you can do. Um, I think it's also a nice uh, watch alike as well for The Office, just for the um, bridge of the workplace comedy, if you like that format. Um, though it's not mockumentary or anything like that. And some of the humor, uh, I'm also a big Brooklyn Nine-Nine fan as well, and I find some of the uh, wackadoodle humor has a bit of a crossover. So I, I guess the shorter way of saying everything I just said is, if you like Michael Schur comedies, this is a good one to check out. Um, and the second season, they, there's only two seasons right now, um, but that's set in the Middle Ages, and it focuses on this young woman, Alexandria, who really wants to just make a difference in the world, pursue an education and everything. Um, and she's forced instead into following her father's footsteps and joining the family business, which is shoveling human waste. Um, <laughs> and then the counterplot to that is uh, Prince Chonsley, who is the son of the reigning king tyrant of this little kingdom. And he's like super into murder. And Prince Chonsley is not very into murder, very into orchestrating the excellent production of Prince Chonsley's Amazing Duck Show. Um, so it sort of follows, uh, it brings like a modern language and a modern perspective to sort of medieval times. And it has that same sort of madcap zany humor and um, yeah, just these little characters plodding along, trying to do a little bit of good and uh, yes very funny. Um, it's been a really nice thing. Uh, new episodes were coming out as we first went into lockdown, and this was like such a welcome little escape on Thursday evenings for me. Um, this is on TBS, and I believe it's also on YouTube TV and FUBU TV, and I'll be really frank with you. I don't know what those things are, but Google told me it's there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I have uh, TV on demand, so I've been watching it off of um, TBS that way for myself. I think that's actually a great segue because I believe that Alyssa, our final present presenter, has YouTube TV. <laughs> oh my god! I I did that on purpose. I set it up for you. We all we planned it out. We planned it out. <laughs> yeah, I I I'm gonna be talking about Shit's Creek, uh, and I encourage you to look up the spelling of that. <laughs> um, it ran for six seasons, and it just recently concluded it. And the first five seasons are on Netflix. But the sixth season I had to watch on YouTube TV, and it is a comedy and about a family of four that, a very shallow family of four that lost all of their money and have to survive in this podunk town that they bought as a joke. And it was co-created by Eugene Levy and his son, Daniel Levy. You'll, if you're a highbrow, you know Eugene Levy from Best in Show. But uh, if, if you're anyone else, you know him as the dad from American Pie. 
and yeah. he his wife in uh this is played by Catherine O'Hara who was his wife in Best in Show and the cast is just great the characters are just phenomenal and they this show it's very very funny but the over the the six seasons there's just they become very the characters like they have a lot of growth they start out really shallow like i said but they they become good people and it's a very heartwarming show in addition to being funny like they it's not like it's similar to arrested development in that they like lose all their money and they have to survive but these you'll like these people you'll love them <laughs> as they love um others and and interact with the town and grow to have just a very warm fuzziness it's more canadian in that way oh they are yeah. they are although they they don't say like like most canadian shows they don't say they're canadian like but they because but you'll catch little bits where they say they have the, the venue's a curling rink and you're like mm, that's not an american thing it's not, it's not how americans work mm. uh it does Catherine o'hara who is the mom you might recognize her from beetlejuice and this is kind of the mm. most beetlejuice like role she that would be the similar role and also moira rose says words the way no human says them she swallowed a dictionary yes <laughs> It's it's from it's my favorite thing is just to listen to a, a Moira Rose sentence <laughs> and try to figure out what what she meant sometimes. They're they're great. It is good to watch it with closed captions and be able to like look in your dictionary app as <laughs> she's talking. Also the wigs and the clothes, the clothes are oh. It's a great show. I, I highly recommend. I actually recommended this to Alyssa, so this is... Oh, okay. I actually, I had to take a break from it because I suffer from, like, severe secondhand embarrassment, and <laughs> that's why I don't watch a lot of comedies, but I, after I took a break, I was able to come back to it and then just power through, and it was worth it. I think Matthew Gilbert in The Globe, um, who's the TV critic, did a thing, it might have been this past week, where um, he had a sort of a, a list of like the top comedies of the past 20 years or whatever. And that was very high on his list. It was like number four or five. Um, I'll say I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah, me too. So you can watch, if you can binge the first five seasons ad-free on Netflix. But if you go on, uh, I got it the sixth season through YouTube TV and like me, you'll have to uh, suffer through the same commercial over and over. Um, my commercials were for CBS All Access, and it says, you're watching this on CBS All Access. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not. This is pop TV. I wish it was CBS All Access, because I wouldn't have to pay for this. What? Ew, David. Ew, David. I was very frustrated, because in watching um, on Hulu, Every 10 minutes, there was a commercial for um, the new series with um, Chris Evans and Michelle Dockery. Um, why am I blanking on it? Defending Jacob. Yes. Um, based on the novel. It takes place in Massachusetts. The book was great. And I really want to watch that. And of course, I can't because it's on Apple TV. And I don't understand why one streaming platform is advertising something that you can't actually watch because it's on some completely competing platform that you They're don't see. teaming up to get your money. Yeah. yeah. Well, Apple is like, you pay Does for Apple this. Apple secretly own Hulu or? You'll pay no, ABC for owns Hulu. Disney. Disney owns Disney, Hulu. Disney owns it. Yeah. I, I, I just get the commercials for, I just get like the car commercials that are like, times are tough. But <laughs> yeah. you still need a car. Yeah, car is <laughs> and you can have one delivered to your home completely touchless now. I, I have to say, I don't know whether this is, I don't know how people feel about this, but we've, we've been finding ourselves getting very frustrated by the fact that basically every company out there needs to have a heartwarming, we're with you commercial. We're and too so much. And honestly, 
I don't think I can do soft piano music anymore. <laughs> like, I'm sorry to the works of Adele and Billy Joel ballads, but I've, I've had it up to here. <laughs> I can't take the soft piano music and someone telling me that in these uncertain times. Oh, <laughs> unprecedented and uncertain. Yeah. There for you. The new normal. Fruity Pebbles is here for you. <laughs> <laughs> one more like, like they've gray washed footage, like stock footage of like people playing outside. That's like a lot of things are different right now. <laughs> and yeah, and always in that monotone, soothing, soothing voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just glad to know that that Taco Bell feels my pain and <laughs> is yeah. for me when I, yeah, I. I'm I will say the Domino's commercials have kind of been working on me, not because I care about, but it does make me kind of want Domino's, which is not a feeling that I normally have, but I just see the commercial so much that I'm like, maybe I do want to order Domino's. Hmm. Is it them or is it another pizza place? There's one that's like, oh, our pizzas aren't touched by human hands. And there's something about it that I find deeply disturbing. <laughs> That one, I, that one I have, it. That, that is deeply disturbing. I don't think that's the, the Domino's is like, we can deliver it to you. A, and they include in there being like, do you need a job? Come up for <laughs> Domino's. Come like, for Domino's. Really awesome. us. <laughs> the, meanwhile, the commercial from Facebook that uses all this historical footage from like the last pandemic is like, oh, these these times, like it was about, it was narrated by a woman that was born in the pandemic and is like, oh, you new mothers, you'll, you'll get through it. And honestly, when I first watched it, I was like, is this a hospital? Is this some sort of infant services? And no, it was Facebook. And I got so angry. <laughs> <laughs> also, so Facebook has all these commercials that are like, I'm, this is Facebook, don't cancel us. Uh, but Facebook has all these commercials that are like, like, mutual aid and like people getting together and they're all fake like all the groups that they highlight in the in the commercials are fake yeah. well, that's facebook for you yeah <laughs> like they're they're not real like those things do exist but not these ones that facebook has <laughs> well that seems is that i guess we we kind of came to the end there with the with facebook is fake don't cancel us mark zuckerberg <laughs> moral of, moral of uh, bb bb flex Facebook is, is Facebook. <laughs> Just call us Snopes. Yeah. Listen to us, not Facebook. That's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the moral of the story. That's the moral of the story. But I think, I think we all, I think that's all, like, we have a lot of nice and variety. If they, well, it was a lot of comedies, but maybe that's what we honestly, need. Honestly. We're right? heavy on the ha-has. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but who, who can blame us, honestly? Yeah, that's, that's what people want. That's what we want. So enjoy some of the comedies. I'll put everything that we talked about. We'll be in the notes with uh, where you can find them as well. And we'll see you probably in about two weeks for more BB Flicks. Uh, check out our Facebook, our YouTube, and our Instagram for more everything from us. Okay. Sounds good. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Are you ready? Let's do it. I'm a Lamborghini. I'm a Hollywood star. I'm a little bit tipsy when I drive my car.